Hey guys, so a video I've been asked a lot for over the years is one kind of about critiquing fish, um, what I look for as far as faults and stuff like that. So recently someone asked me to do a video on how I picked my pears, which kind of um, ties into critiquing fish because you have to know what the faults are before you breed a pair. So I decided to do a little series and I'm going to pick a couple of my pairs that have different tail types and I'll do an individual one for each pair and kind of show you the faults I see. I have the standards printed out. We'll talk about that in a second. And um, kind of talk about my goals for the fish and how what traits the fish has that I think will help me in my breeding goals and continuing my lines and making show fish. So obviously right now we're looking at crown tails. This is a pair that I bred. They're a little bit older. They're over a year old. I spawned them last March, I believe. So um, they're a little bit older than what I normally spawn. I normally like to spawn between six to eight months, maybe a little bit younger. Um, but most of the time I don't spawn older fish. But um, I didn't have any room to spawn these fish because I had such large spawns in the fall. And um, they were a little bit too small to spawn back when I did my last batch. This male was the runt of the litter and he took quite a long time to reach up to the female as far as size. So anyway, we're going to look at them and we'll talk about their faults, their pluses, their minuses, and all that kind of good stuff. So um, a little bit on the background of these fish. Um, these are an F1, which means their parents were not related. The male I bought, I found at a Petco or a PetSmart. He just happened to be a really nice crown tail. I got lucky. And then the female was an import, and I believe she came from Indonesia, but I'd have to go back and look. The male was a grizzle, which is kind of like a blue um, pattern that kind of slowly grows onto the body, but it's different from marble. It doesn't grow in patches. Um... And then the female was a turquoise, much like this girl is, only she had a little bit of marbling to her. So, um, when these guys were younger, they were both turquoise. This male was solid turquoise with a black head, and um, he just decided fairly recently, in fact, that he wanted to be white instead. So, he's slowly been marbling. And now he's pretty much completely white with just his black head right there. And he has a few spots on his fins that are blue and a couple spots that are even red. But most of him is white. The female has not changed color. She is a turquoise. She has a little bit of red wash, which is hard to see because she's a little bit pale right now. This light is kind of bright, but I wanted to be able to show their faults and form off to the best I could. But you can see she has a little bit of red in her fins, and she's also she'd also be considered a black head. Um, her head's a little bit light right now, but as I said, she's a little bit nervous, so she's not as dark, um, deeply colored as she normally is. So we'll start talking about the faults, and I'll focus on each individual fish, and then uh, talk about why I'm going to breed them together. Um, but first, let's talk quickly about the standards. Now I have them printed out for me because it's just easier for me to look at stuff on paper and I can highlight and underline stuff and make notes. But um, if you're interested in reading the IBC standards, they're available on the website. I'll put a link in the description. You don't have to be a member to read the standards. You can go right to the website and anybody can download it and read it. Um, you'll want to start on Chapter 5 general standards and I believe that's on page 33 um, the first part of the standards is actually more about putting on shows and then the actual stuff about the fish the fish starts on chapter 5 so you'll start with the general standards now it does say or it does have pictures of half moons here but you still want to read this part 
no matter what fish you're breeding, what type of fish, because if you go through this chapter, you'll come to the fault list, and it's general faults for all of all classes. So these faults, and there's a whole bunch of them. There's two pages. I think my pages are out of order, but um, they break them down by fin type. Whoops, sorry, I got that really bright. They'll break them down by fin type and all kinds of stuff, and those those apply to every tail type for the most part. So um, you're going to want to look at this and then look at your individual standards for whatever type you are looking at, which in this case is crown tails. So um, it can be a little daunting at first uh, reading the standards. I usually recommend just take it one section at a time. And if you have questions or don't understand something, there's a million IBC people that are happy to help. Um, you can email the judging board. Um, you can ask on the IBC Facebook page. And there's plenty of people that will help explain, you know, what does this mean? What does that mean? So don't feel free to ask and don't feel intimidated by it. Just take it a little bit as, at a time. Um, maybe pick one type of fish that you really like and learn their standard and not really concern yourself with the other standards um, for the other fish. So why do we have a standard? Uh, that just allows us to compare fish and we have an ideal that the IBC has uh, created and we try to breed our fish as close to that ideal as possible. Now no fish is going to be perfect so you kind of work on a least fault system. You try to pick the fish with the least amount of faults you can. So I pick my breeding fish the same way I would kind of judge them in a show with a few small examples. I mean, a few small differences. So an example of a difference would be that this male, his color would not do well in a show because um, he, a solid white male should not have that black on his head but he would not be classified as a marble because his body is basically completely white. So um, I'm not paying attention to that as far as breeding goes because I don't really care what color these guys come out as. I'm pretty sure they're all going to be marbles, and that's fine with me. I'm really looking more toward form. Um, so that's something that would be different... Um, between judging them for like a sh if they were at a show and judging them for breeding um, there's three main things that are you look for in bettas and that's dimension which is the shape of their fins and how long they are and their proportion and all that their condition do they have any bent fins or body issues or anything like that and then deportment. And deportment is flaring, what this guy's doing now. You want a betta that's vigorous and swimming around constantly and showing off and acting aggressive. That's our ideal. So he's got really good deportment. The female, uh, females generally will not be as aggressive as males. Um, sometimes you can get some that are really aggressive, but for the most part, um, they're not quite as aggressive, but even still, she should be flaring a little bit more than she is, and that's just because she's nervous being in this brightly lit photo tank. But you can see she's starting to get vertical bars, which means she is interested in the male. So, um, let's talk about some things that are kind of general faults or things that we look for, um, that we would look for in any type of fish. One thing is, um, do they have 180 degree spread? Every fish, it doesn't matter if it's a placot, a crown tail, double tail, veil tail, they all should have 180 degree spread. That means the edges of their fins should stretch out and be a straight line. You want to envision a D shape, like the letter D um, for their caudal fin. Both of these actually have slightly less than 180, um, which is a minor fault. So both of them are already starting off with minor faults. 
That doesn't mean they're bad fish. All, all fish have faults, but you go into the, go into it realizing that both of these fish have issues with spread. So that's something I'm going to look for in the next generation. I'm going to want to find the fish that have the best spread possible. Um, you want to look at overall balance and symmetry um, on a long fin fish. You it should look like a circle if you trace a line around the edges of the fins. This male is pretty symmetrical. His anal fin is slightly long, slightly longer than his caudal fin, uh, but not super bad. If he would hold his flare, it would be easier for you to see, but he is a maniac. So again, a slightly long anal fin is still only a minor fault, so we're up to two minor faults on this guy. Um, Talking about females, a big problem is females having fins that are too long. Uh, long finage or male finage on a female is not desirable. Um, you want the fins to be about one third the length of the body or less. You don't want them to be super long. So she has appropriately uh, appropriate fin length for a female. Um, her anal fin, again, is also a little bit long, but um, it's nice and level. It's got a really nice shape to it. It's not slanted, um, and it has good web reduction, which is something we'll talk about in a minute. So she's got a good shape, so it being the fact that her anal fin's a little bit long, that's not something we're super worried about at this point. So... Um, another thing you would look at if these guys were in show would be their condition, their fins. Um, do they have any broken rays and stuff like that? And you'll notice that these guys do have a few stubby rays and broken rays. Most noticeably, the first ray on this guy's dorsal broke off a long time ago. Of course, he's not going to turn around when I'm trying to show it off. So you can see that first ray on his dorsal is a bit of a stub. Uh, he broke it off a while ago, and bettas, if they break their rays off, they normally will grow back, but sometimes they don't. So that's something that would be a condition fault. Now, I don't really take that into consideration when I'm looking at breeding fish because I know that this fish had that dorsal ray, and it was all fine when he was young, and that's just something that happened to him um, over the course of his life. So condition, you don't look too much for breeding as far as like little bends or little curls in the fins and stuff like that. Um, when you're looking at condition as far as breeding, you wanna look at is the fish healthy? Um, does it have any misaligned scales? Does it have any major uh, deformities, any spinal kinks? Um, is it super thin? Um, Stuff like that is what you would look for as far as condition. Um, so the last thing we'll talk about as far as general things is we want to look at their body shape. Um, the standard calls for a modified spindle shape, which a lot of people don't understand what that means. So um, I like to think of it more of, as like a torpedo or a bullet. So you want it to be kind of narrow at their face and get wider and then taper back down again towards their tail. Um, this male has a really nice body shape. Um, the black on his head makes his top line look a bit weird, but I've looked at him really close and his top line is perfectly fine. Um, and he also has a really nice body. Uh, one problem you see a lot in crown tails is they'll have a really narrow body and um, that's not good because that doesn't help hold those fins up. So he has a nice thick body, which is something I'm really happy about. The female, if we look at her, she does have a little bit more of a narrow body. You can see the caudal peduncle, which is where her body meets her tail fin. It's much narrower than the rest of her body. So that's something I'll be looking out for um, in the fry. And as I said, again, that's a really common problem in crown tails, and I knew that's something that I would have a problem with um, in this line. Her top line is pretty good. She does have a little bit of like a bump right there, 
um, near her dorsal, like a little bit of an angle, but it's not huge. It's just slight, so it would probably be a minor fault again. Um, the rest of her fins, the shape is pretty good. We talked about the caudal. The spread is not quite 180, and the outside edges are not long, so you see the spikes, the rays on her tail fin are extending out, but on the top and bottom, they're shorter. So ideally, those short rays would be the same length as the rays in the middle. And he has kind of the same thing going on with him too. The outside rays are shorter, um, so that's something we want to improve on. Again, that's a really common problem in crown tails, um, is bad spread and short outside rays. The one thing I really like about this female, she has a pretty wide dorsal for crown tails, especially for a crown tail female, and she does have a few stubby short rays in the front of her dorsal, which is a slight fault, but um, I really like the width of her dorsal, how wide it is. So, all in all, I do consider these guys high quality crown tails. Um, for the U.S., they would probably be show quality. It's really hard to find quality crown tails in the U.S. right now. Nobody breeds them hardly. Um, so I would consider them show quality. Uh, people in Asia would probably disagree because it's a lot easier to get super, super high quality crown tails in Asia, especially in Indonesia. They make amazing crown tails over there, um, which is where her mother was originally bred was Indonesia so um, well both of their mothers they're siblings um, so I do consider these guys fairly good quality crown tails um, looking at them from a standards point of view so once we talk about the general faults we can start looking at the crown tail standard and looking at their faults. Now there's three types of crown tail extensions, and this is what a lot of people get confused on, and believe me, it took me a while to get it too. You have double ray, single ray, and cross ray. Now cross rays are easy to recognize, the rays cross, simple. Um, double rays, what that means is they extend, but then they have more webbing in between, so. I know that's not a really good explanation. Like I said, it took me a while to understand it, and I still don't explain it very well. But basically, it means that the rays poke out, and then you have more webbing between the rays again, so they have a double ray. This female, while her rays are really narrow and hard to see, she is a double ray. Let's see if we can get her to... There's a good shot of her tail. So you can see they extend... And then they, um, there's webbing in between the rays again, so they have little forks on the end. The male, he's more of a single ray. So um, his just look like each ray is splitting out by itself from the fin. So I know he's really, he does not hold still, so it's really hard to see on him. But he's more like this guy here. We're... Each ray is just kind of like poking out from the web. And the webbing is the solid part of the fin. So webbing is what goes between the rays, and the rays are the little spiny parts between the fins, or between the rays. So we have one single ray and one double ray. I personally don't have a preference between either one. Um, I think double rays... Are, they tend to be more preferred. Um, the main thing you don't want as far as rays is you don't want one that has um, messy rays where one has like four branching or two branching and stuff like that. You want them to be uniform. So if they're all single, they need to all be single. If they're all double, they need to all be double and so on and so forth. Um, you want the reduction of the webbing to be ideally 50%, um, but the minimum is 33% for males and 25% for females. So she, she's probably just on the edge of 25%.
Um, it would probably be a judgment call. Uh, one judge might say that's not 25%. One judge might say that is 25%. I think it's close enough to 25% to call it 25. So she has 25% reduction. So that means 25% of her fins are the fringy crown part. And then the rest of it is solid, like a no any normal fish. So there's the 75% solid, and then the 25% is web reduction. This male has 50% reduction, so he has he's pretty much half of his fins are solid, and half of his fins are the extensions. There's a nice shot of him. Um, his dorsal fin is probably actually a little bit more than 50% but 50% is considered the ideal. Um, now I could go over all the crown tail faults with you, but the main ones that these guys have um, are ones that I've already mentioned, the short uh, edge rays, the less than 100% or less than 180 degree spread. Most of their faults go along with the general faults. As far as crown tail specific faults, they really don't have a lot. Um, he has one weird ray in the middle. You see this one that's kind of thick right there. And it's just one that has kind of weird branching. So that one might be a fault. Um, but as far as their web reduction, that's all good. Their rays are really straight. They're not curly for the most part, which is really amazing for fish their age. Um, the male's rays aren't super thin. The female's rays are getting kind of thin. But again, for their age, it's pretty amazing that they're still as in good condition as they are. Because crown tails tend to get curly over time. Their rays break. They're just probably the most delicate of the betas types as far as keeping them nice. So um, all in all, they're in really great condition for their age. And going by the standard, their rays and everything are correct. So these guys did not have any siblings so i don't have any i can compare compare them to i could pull some of my red crown tails down and show you but that would make this video like twice as long as it already is um in some other videos i will pull some siblings and show you um different options and then tell you why i'm picking to picking the fish i am picking to breed in this case these two were the only survivors in their spawn I want to continue the line, so I'm going to breed them together and hopefully get good babies out of it. I'm reasonably confident that we will. Before this, I went and wrote down all the faults and everything. I won't show you my chicken scratch, but um, basically both of them have about five faults that I could find. Um, which sounds like a lot, but all of the faults are either minor or slight. They're not major, they're not severe. So um, while they do have several small faults, um, none of them would disqualify them from breeding. Okay, so I'm going to cut this one off before it gets too long. I hope I didn't confuse you guys too much. I know I'm starting with probably one of the harder types to grasp. Um, in the next video, we'll look at some placots, um, which are a little bit easier. And then I have half moons and veil tails I'll be breeding as well. So those will be future videos as well. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have any comment or questions about um, something I said in the video, or you need help kind of critiquing your own fish, you're not sure if the fish you have are good for breeding, um, feel free to contact me through my Facebook page, which is linked in the description. Um, I don't always look at YouTube comments, so that's not the best place to get in touch with me. It's always best to get in touch with me through my Facebook page because I'll go, I'll read the messages there almost daily, if not daily. So thanks for watching, and be sure to come back and check back for the next video in this series, which I'll try to release as soon as possible. And we'll see you in the next video.